Our next set of practice problems, folks, comes from the wonderful world of codominance. And when we talk about codominance, at least in this class, we're going to be mainly dealing with blood types. And if you remember, uh, several different blood types exist. We have A, B, O, and AB. Now, what this tells us, remember we inherit two alleles from each. A and B are both dominant to O. That's what makes it codominant, is we have two traits that are dominant. So when we express both dominant traits, we get AB, all right? So you can you have two alleles for each, A and B. In order to have A or B blood, we can either be AA or AO. Remember, A is dominant to O, so that A is going to be expressed. For B, we have to be BB or BO. For O, we must be OO, and for AB, we must be AB, all right? So what makes this a little bit different is the fact that we don't have just one trait that's dominant to another. We have two traits that are dominant, all right? They both express dominance over O. When we have both, both traits are expressed. It's a little bit different than incomplete dominance where it's a mixture of the two. In codominance, we have both traits that are being expressed, okay? And our focus on this is going to be primarily with blood typing. So let's go through some practice problems with blood typing specifically and see if we can solve some codominant genetic problems. We're going to go right into this first problem. Both Jeremy and Donna have type AB blood. What are the possible blood types of their offspring? So we need to first off determine the genotype of the parents and then perform our Punnett square just like we normally would. So both have AB blood. So we're going to cross an individual who is AB with an individual who is AB. All right, simple, straightforward. Let's draw out our, our Punnett square here and perform our cross. So A, B, A, and B. And we cross it just like we normally would, OK? Really does not get much easier than this. So we look, what are the possible blood types of their offspring? Well, we have one individual. Let's see, we got type A here. So we have one individual who could be A. Um, we have two that would be AB and one that would be B. So if we were to determine like percentages, I know that's a really important thing that will come up. Sometimes they'll ask for percentages rather than just numbers. What's the percentage? What is the probability of having a child with type A blood? Well, there's one square with A in it, four possible squares. So that means that there is a 25% chance we could have A. All right, you do the same thing. You have 50% chance of AB, right, and a 25% chance of B blood. All right, so all this is, it's just like another Punnett square. The only difference is that there are a couple of different rules involving blood typing because it is co-dominant. Remember, A and B are both dominant to O, so they can coexist. You can have A and B antibodies, which is what A and B stand for. All right, let's do a couple more practice problems to get a better understanding of this. Is it possible to have a child with type O blood from a parent with the A? and one with type B. All right, should be type A and type B. But I think you get the idea here. So we need to see if it is possible to get an offspring that has type O blood from this. Uh, a lot of the questions that you're going to encounter here are not just straight up, what are my offspring? Some of them may be questions like this, kind of the whole Mori, you are the father sort of situation. So make sure you're able to do these. So let's see, we have a child with type O one parent with A and one with B. If you remember, there are two possible ways we can have type A blood. We can either be AA or we could be AO, right? But remember that A is dominant to O. So we could be that or, and then with type B, same thing. We could either be big B, big B or BO. So any one of these could cross. We could cross AA with BO. We could cross AO with BB, AA with BB, or AO with BO. Is there any one of these that's possible where you get a child with type O blood? 
Now, you could go through and perform all of these Punnett squares, but remember, we have to inherit one allele from mom and one from dad. So if you recognize that we have a type, an O here and an O here, that may help you with which parents we need to cross. Let's do a Punnett square with these two parents. And some of you may be able to do this without actually um, writing out the Punnett square. I'd still like you to show your work, but I think you get the idea here, all right? And we notice we can get a child. So the answer is yes, we can get a child with type O blood from a parent that is A and another parent that is B. They just both have to be, have to have O as the recessive trait, all right? So do you see how this works? I hope you do. If you have any questions, make sure you let me know, all right? The last question here asks, what are the odds of having a type B child if a type AB marries a type O and has children? So again, we have an AB and O, and we want to know odds of type B. So start off with your parents. I have one parent that is AB, and I have one parent that is O. Cross them and see what we can do here. So write out your Punnett square. How many squares are B? How many squares are going to be type B? And the answer is two. There are four total squares. So the odds of having a child with type B blood would be 50%. Okay? So, again, there's not really that much difference here. You just need to be able to take the time and work out with some of the problems. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you, all right? We'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.